for us. Even when we fail, He still remembers us and continues to draw us to Him. Okay, Zephaniah 3.17 The Lord your God in your midst, the Mighty One will save. He will rejoice over you with gladness. He will quiet you with His love. He will rejoice over you with singing. So the Lord your God in your midst, the Mighty One, He will save. He is the Mighty One. He will save us, give us eternal life. He will rejoice over you with gladness. He will rejoice over us with happiness. Now many people, they think of God, they don't think of happiness. They don't think of God in a happy way. For me, I learned to appreciate God for everything. I appreciate God for creation. I appreciate God for His salvation. I appreciate God for the work of the Holy Spirit in my heart, for the experience of the Holy Spirit, the joy and the love of God, the peace of God. I appreciate all these things. When I appreciate all these things, then I have more joy. I have joy in the Lord. And I know that God rejoices over me. So God is happy over me. So I, when I think about that, every time I pray, I say, God is rejoicing over me now. He is very happy with me now. And He quiets me with His love. He soothes me. He makes me calm by His love. And He rejoices over you with singing, that He will be singing over us. He will be shouting over us. He is very happy over us. So I hope we all remember this, that God is happy with us, that He has feelings toward us. But many people don't have strong feelings toward God because they don't count the blessings of God. And they don't think of all the, every little thing we have comes from God. Every little thing, the food we have, our body we have, the house we have, everything comes from the Lord. So we say, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Then we'll rejoice over God. And we know that He's rejoicing over us. Then we'll be very, very happy. So many people don't uh, rejoice because God is rejoicing over them because they don't count the blessings. They don't have a good relationship with God. And God's nature, He's a joyful God. He's full of joy. And He's a responsive God. Now, nature is His inequality. He's a responsive God. Whenever we come to Him, He's very happy. And he's full of feelings. He's full of feelings. He's full of joy. He, he's, you know, some people think of God as a judge. No feeling. Very stern. God is not like that. God is full of joy. Now, in his judgment, he's very stern. But when we come to him, we trust in him, he's very happy. So, his nature, he's a joyful God. He's a responsive God. He's a God with feelings. And His grace, He rejoices over us and His joy will come to us. So when people come to God and with praise, loving God and praising God, they will experience God's joy. You know, whenever I think of God and thank God, Hallelujah, I experience His joy. Thank you, Jesus, Hallelujah, and the joy will come out. Hallelujah, ha, 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 ha. And the joy of the Lord will flow through me because God is full of joy. Whenever we come to Him, we'll be filled with joy. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. So, He is a joyful God. He's a responsive God. His grace over us. He remembers us and then He rejoices over us. And He passes His joy to us. And He works in our life so that we can have more joy. So God is a joyful God and He conveys His joy to us. He makes us joyful people when we trust in Him. When we love Him and follow Him, He'll make us joyful people. Now why don't people rejoice over God? Because they don't count the blessings of God. They just look at the problems. When people just look at the problems or they just want to gain money, they just want to gain things for themselves, then they are, they are stuck in the things of the world and then they don't have the joy of the Lord. And then the consequences, the warning. The warning is that then they will, um, they will not enjoy Christian life. They will have 
you know, it, it's like a burden. To believe in Jesus and follow Jesus becomes a burden, not a joy. And they don't enjoy coming to God. But when we count the blessings of God, they will say, Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. You're full of blessings. I enjoy you. I rejoice over you because you rejoice over me. You're happy over me. You're singing over me. And I'm so fortunate, so blessed to have you as my God. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Okay, how? How can we appreciate God for rejoicing over us? When we compare our lives before we knew Christ, and we knew Christ at that time we don't know how to have joy how to have strength how to have peace how we were troubled by sins bound by sins and compared to now if we have a good relationship with God then we are full of joy and full of strength and so we see that God's joy is conveyed to us that we can enjoy His, His joy that He is rejoicing over us then I would say, we can always apply to our life. God is smiling at me now. God is smiling at me now. He's so happy now. He's rejoicing over me now with singing. He's singing over me now. Then when we think, really think about these words, think about how God is happy over us, then we'll have more joy. We say, we have such a good God. A God who is joyful over us, who, who wants to bless us in every way, and He's responsive to us. Whenever we come to Him, He will be very happy, and He will for sure bless us. So when we know that He is such a wonderful God, then we say, Lord, I thank You, I appreciate You, that we have a God like that. Then we'll, we'll rejoice over Him, and we'll enjoy His joy. Because God is rejoicing over me, I can enjoy that. So that's my key to being joyful. Every time I pray or thank God, I, when I'm praying, thank you, Lord Jesus, hallelujah, I love you. Then I know that God is listening to me, God is responding to me, and God is rejoicing over me with singing. Then I'll say, Lord, 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 when I come to you, even though I'm imperfect, still you are happy with me, that you still remember all the good things I've done. And then you are happy over me. So I'm happy because you're happy over me. That you're rejoicing over me. Thank you, Lord. You're rejoicing over me. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You're rejoicing over me. You are, you are really filled with joy because of me. You're filled with the love of God. You are filled with peace and joy. And you, and you appreciate us coming to you even though we don't deserve your blessings and you appreciate that and you respond to us thank you Lord thank you Lord you're so very very wonderful so the more we count the blessings and the more we think about God is rejoicing over me now then we have more joy then we'll be filled with joy Lord you are rejoicing over me now I can be happy because of that I can rejoice because of that. You're so wonderful. You're so wonderful. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. You're so wonderful. So wonderful. Ha, 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 ha. That way, we'll be rejoicing over God every day. And we'll be joyful also because God is rejoicing over us. Then we know that God is responsive. God is happy over us. Hallelujah. Okay, John 15, 5. I'm the vine, you are the branches. He who abides in me and I in him bears much fruit. For without me, you can do nothing. So Jesus is the true vine and we are the branches. And he who abides in Jesus, that Jesus will abide in him. So when we live in him, when we have a close relationship with him, he will also live in us and have a close relationship with us. And then when he, wherever he is, because he is a God of life, he is a source of life, then he will cause us to bear much fruit. Then we'll have more joy, more strength. We have full of, we'll be full of joy and full of strength. And because wherever he is, he'll bring joy. Wherever he is, he'll bring peace and strength and joy and 
So whenever we come close to Him, He'll pour all kinds of blessings because He is full of life and He is full of blessings and all these blessings will come to, to us. For without me, you can do nothing. Without Jesus, we can do nothing. So with Jesus, we can do everything. Okay, now negative examples. Many Christians are still weak because they don't abide in Jesus. They don't have a close relationship with Jesus. So they don't have strength from Jesus. So that is the negative examples. And the positive examples are some Christians, they really enjoy God. And then they, they, they are filled with the fruit of the Holy Spirit and filled with joy and and the fruit of salvation, fruit of uh, our ministry, He will bless many people. And God's nature and grace. God is a God who wants to have a relationship with us. It's Him who draws us to Him, who saves us, and then He draws us with the Holy Spirit to draw us to come to God. So He is a God who draws us to Him. He, he wants us to have a good relationship with Him. And He also is the source of life, wherever He is. His life will give us life and fruit that will have the fruit of joy and strength and peace and holiness and care and compassion, compassion and wisdom and kindness and goodness. So He'll give us all these wonderful gifts. He is full of gifts. Okay, so his nature is that he, he is full of life. He wants to be with us. And he, he can bring uh, all kinds of fruit to our life. Okay, God's grace. God's grace is that he is it's him who draws us to him. He works in our life so that we'll come to him. He changes our life so that we'll follow him. He works in our life so that we'll bear fruit. And then He also, when He comes into our life, He works in our life so that our life is full of fruit. The fruits will come out from our life. And He'll remember all this fruit and He'll, he'll uh, reward us and bless us with more joy and more strength and more wisdom and more provision so that we can bless more people. So that is His nature and His grace. And then... Uh, why don't people have this strength? Because many people don't have a close relationship with God. Many people don't, you know, they don't spend time with God. They don't believe that God is full of goodness. Okay, and then the, the warning is that if people don't abide in Him, then He's thrown out like a branch, you know, a dry branch with a branch and He'll be burned with fire. So if a person doesn't have a good relationship with God at all, no relationship with God at all, then he'll be cast out into the outer darkness, into the fire of hell. So that is the warning. When we have a close relationship with God, we have all kinds of blessings. But when we don't have a good relationship with God, then the result is terrible. And also the person has no strength, no joy. Okay, now how can we abide in him? First, we understand God is very good. Now remember, this is one point that we can put in all messages. Understand that God is very good. He is full of blessings. He is good of kindness. He is full of joy and love and wisdom and all kinds of good things. So understand He is so good. Therefore, we want to come to Him. Therefore, we want to have a close relationship with Him. Therefore, we want to enjoy Him. We want to love Him and pray to Him. So that is the motivation because He's such a good God. Therefore, we want to come close to Him. And then how, how do we come close to Him? By reading the Bible. Because the Bible has many promises of God. It has all the promises and how we can have strength, how we can have joy, how we can serve God and how He will reward us, how He bless us in every way how He gives us wisdom and spiritual gifts. And the Bible also tells us the plan of salvation, how God works in history, how God works in us to bring us to salvation. He tell, tell us all the wisdom of God and all the wonderful works of God. And then when we pray, another thing we do is to pray to Him. When we pray to Him, pray with faith. That means we believe that God is a good God. 
We believe that God wants to bless us. We believe that God is planning to bless us. He is full of blessings. He is blessing us right now. He wants to pour His blessing into our life. So when we come to Him, we'll say, Lord, you're a good God. You want to come close to me. You want to bless me. So whenever we come to Him, we come in with faith. We believe that He wants to bless us. Now, I once saw an article of someone who said that he really admires a spiritual person. And he hid in the room of this person and see how this person read the Bible and prays. And then when he observed how the person read the Bible and pray, and at the end, the person, the spiritual man would, you know, cry out to God and say, Father, Abba Father. And this person was very impressed that he really see God his Father. My response is, that's very good that he sees God his Father. But my question is, why doesn't he start with that? You know, some people just come to that condition at the end of the devotion. But we should come to God in the, at the beginning and say, God is, is very happy over me now. God is rejoicing over me now. Whenever I come to Him, He is very happy right now. He is very happy right now. And so I can come to Him like a child. He is my Father. He is very happy that I come to Him. So whenever we come to Him, we come with confidence and faith that right now God wants to bless me. So whenever we come to God, we say, God is very happy that I'm coming to you. Even though we don't deserve that. We don't deserve God to pay so much attention to us. But God is like that. God is a gracious God. So God is very, very happy that He wants to, you know, He wants to bless us. That He, you know, He is very happy to bless us. So when we pray to God, we say, Lord, you are very happy to come to me. I thank you. Whenever I thank you, whenever I love you, Whenever I respond to you, whenever I meditate on the Word of God, you are very, very happy. You are very happy with me. You bless me. You strengthen me. So, that is how we come to God. Come to God with confidence that we are like a child. Whenever I come to God, I know that God is very, very happy. So, that is the key to having a close relationship with God. Now, some people think, they have to spend a lot of time coming to God now. It's good to spend a lot of time. But some people say, well, today I didn't spend so much time, or for this period of time I didn't spend so much time, so my relationship with God is not so good. My response is this. Now, of course, it's best to have spend more time with God. And also, for the whole day, whatever we're doing, we can be praising God and loving God whenever we are washing dishes, whenever we are walking, we are working, uh, doing simple works, we can be praising God. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So all day long, we can be doing that. And then we can, can have strength all the time. And also, sometimes, for some reason, if a person doesn't have much time to come to God, even for the little time, he can say to himself, God is very happy now that I'm coming to Him. So I can rejoice in God right now that my relationship with God is good even though I don't spend so much time today. But when I come to Him, He is very happy. So we should have this confidence. Whenever I come to Him, He is very happy and He will bless me. He is very happy to bless me. So And whenever I come to Him, I can have confidence that He is listening to me, He is responding to me, He is rejoicing over me with singing, he is very happy with me. Therefore, I s come to Him. I pray to Him with confidence and with joy. I can enjoy God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. You are so wonderful. Thank you, Lord. You are so wonderful. You are so good, Lord. You are so good, Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So whenever we come to God, we always have confidence that He is very happy and He is rejoicing over us and He is blessing us right now then we'll have strength any moment. Even when we have five minutes only in the prayer, then we start with saying, Lord, I come to you now. 
Please forgive my sins and give me eternal life. Please work in my life. I appreciate you. I welcome you. Come into my heart and I worship you. I adore you. And then I know that whenever I love you, I adore you, I trust in you, you are very, very happy. Whenever I trust in you as my Savior, you are very, very happy. Whenever I pray to you, you are very, very happy. So I'm rejoicing over you because you are rejoicing over me. You are laughing over me. You are rejoicing with singing over me now. So I can be rejoicing with singing over you now too. I'm rejoicing over God. God is a wonderful God. God is a good God. Therefore, even if I only have time for five minutes. Now, of course, actually, if you can love God when you are brushing your teeth, when you are taking a shower, when you are walking, when you're doing simple things. Now, if for me, even when I'm preaching now, I'm, when I'm teaching now, I'm also praying to God. I'm loving God at the same time now. So I have strength all day long. But even if a person only has five minutes, if we have confidence that God is rejoicing over me whenever He prays, then He can have strength right away. God is rejoicing over me now. God is smiling at me now. And we can have the picture. Jesus is smiling over me now. He is happy with me now. He is laughing now. He is so excited now. So I'm excited too. I'm very happy too. And I can have a close relationship with Him whatever condition I'm in. No matter how much time I have to pray to Him, I still have strength. I still have joy. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. You're so wonderful. Thank you, Lord. You're so wonderful. Thank you, Lord. You're a good God. You're a wonderful God. You're a kind God. You're a good God. Okay, so if we abide in God like that, we have strength all the time. With confidence, with faith that God is really rejoicing over us now. Even when you are listening to my training, if you listen inten uh, inten attentively, when you pay attention, then you say, when I pay attention to listen to the training, God is happy over me. God is happy over me. So I'm, today, I'm, today I'm demonstrating how, you know, how we can rejoice over God, we delight in God, we are happy with God, and also believe that God is happy with us. And I demonstrate that in uh, using different passages for the messages that in all these messages I can let people see how good God is, to see how wonderful God is, to see His great blessings, to see His great grace, to appreciate Him and to have confidence whenever we come to Him we can have, He is happy with me so I can rejoice in Him. Then we can enjoy life, we can enjoy the relationship with God. So I hope that we all enjoy the relationship with God and have strength from God and enjoy our life and enjoy our ministry. Okay, so I demonstrate that, you know, that in different um, Bible passages, I can talk about God's goodness and how we can live out His great goodness. Okay, now the main part of the message is first the negative examples and positive examples, and also you can put in the reason why, the reason why people have negative examples and then God's nature and grace, and then you can go to warning, reminder and warning, and then how, just, just four parts, it's, uh, it's enough, it's a simpler outline, I'll, I'll give that to you next time. So first, the negative examples and positive examples of people, and why people are in that condition, why they have lack of faith, they are in, in lack of faith, why they don't trust in God, why they don't rejoice in God? Why they don't have strength from God? Why they don't obey God? And then also, um, God's nature and His grace. God's nature is His inner quality. God's grace is His blessings, are His blessings to us, how He blesses us. And then, three, the warning. If people don't rejoice in God, they don't count the blessings of God, they don't obey God, what will happen? And then four, what will happen uh, how? How can we 
live out this quality of God, this nature of God. Okay? So I hope that we all you understand this. So when you preach, you're full of the life of God, full of the joy of the Lord. You're full of the strength of the Lord. And then you rejoice over God whenever we, you know, we serve God. Okay, let us have a prayer now. Thank you, Lord Jesus. You're so wonderful. You're so wonderful. You're full of blessings. You're full of goodness. You are a good God. Everything you do is good. Everything, every blessings of yours is wonderful. Thank you, Lord. Help us to appreciate you. Help us to love you. Help us to have confidence in you that always you are happy with me whenever we come to you, whenever we obey you, whenever we love you, whenever we serve you. You are very, very happy and you rejoice over us. So we have confidence whenever we come to you, that we have confidence that when we come to you, you are very happy that our relationship with God will be good. And Lord, thank you, thank you, thank you. And we understand the destructiveness of sin. Therefore, we don't want to stay in sin. We don't want to sin. We don't want to uh, let sin separate us from God. We don't want to let sin destroy our relationship with God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. You are so wonderful. Thank you, Lord Jesus. We're so wonderful. We will love you. We adore you. We'll follow you. We want to live out your wonderful plan and we want to let people know how wonderful you are. We want to let people know how loving you are, how gracious you are, how you, your nature is wonderful, your grace is abundant, and you are full of blessings, and you are happy to accept us, and you are happy to bless us, and you are happy to bless Africa. Lord Jesus, in many places in Africa, there is poverty. Lord, bless Africa. Help us to love you and obey you, and give us wisdom how to build up, you know, build up Africa, so that Africa will have the blessings of God. We have more uh, 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 richness in every area so that people are blessed by you. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for your wonderful blessings. Please bless all these pastors so that they will love you and serve you with gladness, so that they always rejoice in God, so that they will be blessed, their whole life will be blessed. Thank you, Lord Jesus, so that we'll live out the, the life of God, so we'll live out the, the grace of God. Thank you, Jesus, for your wonderful grace. Thank you. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Okay, God bless you. If you have any questions, you can send to me. Actually, when, when I'm teaching to you, when you have questions, you can send to me and then I can answer the questions whenever you send to me. Okay, God bless you and I hope that you will um, understand this and apply to your life and apply to your ministry that you can enjoy your ministry. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you, everyone everyone okay bye bye goodbye please send your questions and also send your photos in the photo group okay please god bless you bye bye